And now, ladies and gentlemen, the class of 1988. attention. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present a genuine hero, a true servant of our country, the Vice President of the United States, Mr. George Bush. General Palmer, please be seated. And frankly, the rain seems to be letting up here. I, uh, <laughs> the General Palmer, and thank you for that warm introduction. Secretary Marsh, General Bono, Congressman Gilman, and up here, smart under the shelter, Congressman Garcia. Uh, tell those Democrats, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, and of course, to our honored guest, the Chief Justice of the United States, First Captain, 
Greg Louts and the class of 88. I'm delighted to be here. An honor, indeed, on a day that's important to you, West Point's class of 88, but also for your country. For each class that travels through this academy and emerges in ranks, strengthens our military, and in so doing, strengthens the peace. I've been here three times in the past seven years, and each time I'm struck by a paradox. How plain and prosaic a place this is in many respects, and yet how evocative. It's impossible to come to West Point and not feel a kind of tug, a tug that's hard to describe, but that has to do with our history and our lives, and the ancient call of valor, and a certain long gray line. The next president has a clear-cut task to inspire confidence with a coherent foreign policy voice, to engender respect with resolve, to keep the world safe, not with vain dreams, but with hard decisions. And who will help him? You. For you're the strength we talk about. You're the resolve we show. You are the instruments of our foreign policy. And from what I see and hear, our future in this hand is in good, in this respect, is in good hands. And so together we work in unity and strength, and then there'll be a greater chance for peace to flourish in the world, for freedom to spread, and for you, our young peacekeepers, to never have to go into battle as some others did and see your friends never return. These are big ambitions but they're the only kind to have, the only kind that make a difference and make an improvement in history in the lives of man. Thank you. Even though it's a rainy day, it's been a great pleasure to be with you and an honor as well. God bless you all. Thank you. Mr. Vice President, on behalf of the United States Military Academy, Graduating class of 1988, it is my distinct privilege and pleasure to present to you the ceremonial full dress hat. We appreciate your words of inspiration and for sharing this special day with our families and us. Thank you, sir. Will the members of the class of 1988 now come forward to receive diplomas? Yes, yes, sir. The vice. Second Regiment. Fourth Regiment.
Thank you, General. Mr. Vice President, I haven't perspired so much since I retired from the bench. A word about the oath. I will ask you to raise your right hand, and after the first word, I, will you repeat your name, and then we will proceed with the oath. If you will raise your right hand. I. Do, having been appointed an officer of the United States Army in, in the grade of second lieutenant, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Commandant of Cadets, take charge of the graduating class. First captain, dismiss the graduating class. <laughs> <laughs> 